Hi, this is Deacon Jeff, and today we're going to talk about St. Benedict. July 11th is the feast day of St. Benedict of Nursia. Benedict was born March 480 to a Roman noble family in central Italy. As a student in Rome, he did not like the immoral life being led by his fellow students. Something inside him told him there was more to life, and he decided to seek God as a hermit. He lived in the cave for several years, and word of his strong spiritual life began to be known to others. When the abbot of a nearby monastery died, the monks came to Benedict and asked him to be their abbot. Benedict agreed, but he knew it would not be easy for those monks to accept his spiritual discipline. And he was right. These monks did not like the discipline Benedict put into place, so they tried to kill him with poisoned wine. According to legend, when Benedict prayed a blessing over the cup, the cup shattered. With that, their plot was revealed, and Benedict left and returned to his cave. Around 5.30, Benedict realized he could no longer live a completely hidden life. So he left the cave and founded the Benedictine Monastery of Monte Cassino on a hilltop between Rome and Naples. St. Benedict is known as the father of Western monasticism. And this is because of his writing called The Rule, also known as The Rule of St. Benedict. The rule defines the rhythm of life for those in a monastery. Men go to the monastery to seek God. But how can one develop that special relationship with God? Well, this is where the rule comes in. The rule provides a guide for monks on living a life of prayer, study, manual labor, and living together in community under the guidance of an abbot. It provides a schedule for daily routines to help the mind be more focused on seeking God rather than with worldly distractions. And he even gave the monks a motto, Oro et Labora, pray and work. Benedictine spirituality is known for its moderation and hospitality. As St. Benedict would say in chapter 53 of the rule on the reception of guests, all guests who present themselves are to be welcomed as Christ. For he himself would say, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. That's from Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. During the Middle Ages, virtually all Western monasteries were gradually brought under the rule of St. Benedict. St. Benedict himself went on to form 12 monasteries before his death on March 21, 543. Today, the rule of St. Benedict is still relevant as a way to guide a person to deeper humility, into a deeper relationship with others, and ultimately with God. I am an oblate of St. Benedict, affiliated with St. Bernard Abbey in Coleman, Alabama. As an oblate, I join the monks for evening prayer once per month to share in at least some part of community life with them. And there is something beautiful about chanting the evening prayers of the Liturgy of the Hours in the Abbey Church. It truly is a special time. The interior of the church takes on a golden glow as the evening sun filters through the stained glass and the smell of incense fills the air. Evening prayer is during Eucharistic adoration, so Jesus is present with us in the Blessed Sacrament as we pray. Time in the Abbey Church is a unique blend of peace, fellowship, and prayer. And many times the feeling of God's presence with us is so very tangible. As Oblates, we bring the rule of St. Benedict out of the monastery into the secular world trying to take the principles of praying and working into our daily lives. It also impacts how we treat others by trying to live the Benedictine charism of hospitality. It guides us to be humble of heart and treat others with respect and love. St. Benedict is the patron saint of Europe, kidney disease, monks, poisoning, school children, and more. St. Benedict of Nursia, Pray for us. May God's grace and peace be with you.